Before we begin, as we look at this graphic, let us introduce a caveat. This is not your standard research study in regard to intermittent fasting or caloric restriction. What the researchers did is they wanted to see if there was an opportune time in which to consume those calories during the day or night in combination with basically caloric restriction. Now, as you look at this graphic, you look at total daily or the timing of the food, or I should say the timing of the calories that were consumed, and the life expectancy. You notice as you head closer and further, further, further down to the left, the variety of those dots, which represent certain mice on different types of diets, begins to decline dramatically. And what the research discovered, yes, caloric restriction did result in about a 10% increase in life expectancy. But when that caloric restriction was basically combined with consuming those calories during the active part of their day, as opposed to the inactive part, life expectancy skyrocketed. And I mean dramatically so. I mean, now I'm talking 10, 15, 20%. We're talking far more than that, which we are gonna get into right now. So look at that chart. It's pretty amazing and it speaks for itself. But now let's see what the research says as follows. Cutting calories and eating at the right time of day leads to longer life in mice. In a study that followed hundreds of mice over the lifespan, calorie restriction combined with time-restricted eating, booting, booting, boosted longevity. Whether you want to call it circadian rhythms, remember back in the 70s and 80s, it used to be biorhythms and so on and so forth. Well, there obviously is a truth to that. To proceed, let's go to the backstory. Question of time. Recent years has seen the rise of many popular diet plans that focus on what is known as intermittent fasting, such as fasting on alternate days or eating only during a period of six to eight hours per day. To unravel the effects of calories, fasting, and daily or circadian rhythms on longevity, Takahashi's, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, team undertook an extensive four-year experiment. Four years! The team housed hundreds of mice with automated feeders to control when and how much each mouse ate for its entire lifespan. Some of the mice could each eat as much as they wanted, ad lib ad libitum, while others had their calories restricted by 30 to 40%. And those on calorie restricted diets ate on different schedules. Mice fed the low calorie diet at night over either a two hour or 12 hour period lived the longest. And I mean, the extension was dramatic, the team discovered. The results suggest that time restricted eating has positive effects on the body, even if it doesn't promote weight loss. As a New England Journal of Medicine study suggested, Takahashi's points out that the study likewise found no differences in body weight, which surprised me, among mice on different eating schedules. However, quote, unquote, we found, quoting, profound differences in life span. And here we go. Now, the new research suggests that the body's daily rhythms play a big part in this longevity effect, eating only during the most active time of day. So I keep in mind, in the mice, the active time of day is night. In humans, the active time of day, day. Uh, substantially extended the lifespan of mice on a reduced caloric diet, calorie diet. However, Hughes Medical Institute investigator Joseph Takahashi and colleagues report in the May 5th, 2022 Journal of Science. In his team study of hundreds of mice over four years, that's time detailed research, a reduced calorie diet alone extended the animal's lives by 10%. All right, pretty much a given. But feeding mice the diet only at nighttime when mice are most active. Now, again, the caveat that in humans, that'd be their daytime, anagalus, anagalus, as we'll go into in a second. Uh, but in mice, it's nighttime. When mice are most active, extended life by 35%. 35%. To put that in human terms, if the study um, basically has had the same outcome in individuals or humans, you look in, for example, 78.6 or whatever is average life expectancy US right about now, 
So thou would extend it out to 106 years of age. And then, for example, if you want to go places longer life expectancy, such as Hong Kong, you're looking at about 114 to 115 years of age, extend the lifespan out to. We're talking 35%. In a society, when you're trying to creep out one, two, or 3%, and not only that, we're probably even talking healthy years as caloric restriction and intermittent fasting have been shown to how yield other health benefits outside of even that. 35%, you're extending life expectancy by one third. Let that sink in for a second or two before we proceed. That combo, a reduced calorie diet plus a nighttime eating schedule or the time of activity, again, could be different for humans, tackled, tackled, tacked on an extra nine months to the animal's typical two-year median lifespan. For people, that'll be analogous, 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 thank you. Plan will be restrict eating to daytime hours. So basically, that would be the similar comparison. Now, people are going to ask a question because obviously uh, they want to reiterate this. It's not really mentioned in the topic paragraph per se. So we're going to review the supplemental information, which you can find the abstract, which I'll have a link for you as well, uh, published, but not the full study. But however, though, if you go down to the PDF and you click on the supplemental information, information like this will present itself, which will yield you incredible insight into the technical detail in which this research was conducted. After six weeks of recording ad libitum, ad libitum, uh, food access, mice were randomly assigned to one of the six feeding conditions, 24 access, ad lib D, whenever you want to, 70% of baseline ad lib levels fed, uh, levels fed at the beginning of the dark cycle or day cycle, whatever it comes down to be. So the question is going to be often, is just restricting your dietary patterns to the most active times of day, the 12 hour stretch or two hour stretch and restricting calories or is just eating whenever during that 12 hour stretch and not eating at all? Well, the answer to that is as follows. Yes, it did reduce calories by 70%, but in combination with that cycle on the timing of eating only during the 12 hours when the most active and not eating at all the remaining time, again, and with combination of that 30% restriction of calories compared to the other control group, which ate whenever, whatever, per se. Again, that is incredible information, but it's amazing, whoops, the fact when you go, now it turned out well, it's amazing the fact when you look at it, you're looking actually at 35% extension in median life expectancy. If that was to translate to individuals, I mean, you look at that, if someone said, hey, I had this pill and extends your lifespan by one third, you'd have everyone basically knocking down the door and try to get a hold of it. But here it is, at least in this animal model, a simple, eloquent experiment over a four year period of time, painstakingly detailed, yielded an incredible outcome. Even if it wasn't 35%, say it's 20%. Can you imagine that per se? And not just also increased life span, you may also be increasing, I don't want to add publisher bias, healthy years in those extended years. Years of vitality, energy, and years more experience to explore and entertain ourselves, per se. Again, gratitude to the researchers. Wonderful study. Link will be there to the abstract. They look into the different diets they had and so on and so forth over time. Uh, basically, weed out if you want to see if it's any confounding gratitude and as always my news are humble thank you for watching i really really appreciate it I look forward to you all once again next week and of course i'll you watch catch you next time